Hello chess fans, this is Rick from chess to impress With the results of the first competition, I launched a competition on Saturday the 7th of October. I said you can win a chess book if you tell me in one sentence who is your favorite world champion. Many of you have entered, thank you very much for that, and these are the results in this video. But of course I cannot just talk about results of a competition. In a video of chess to impress I have to show some chess as well. So at the end of the video, I will give you the solution to this wonderful composition from Wolfgang Pauli, a German-Romanian composer. The, this problem was published in the Deutsches Wochenschach in 1910. It's a mate in four, only seven pieces on the board, white to checkmate a black king on the fourth move. You may want to try this for yourself. It's quite remarkable. It's quite beautiful. But first the results of the competition. Giveaway competition results of week one, sponsored by the Mind Game Shop. There's the link, I will put it in the description box. Sponsored by the Mind Game Shop, ran by Erika Siva, a woman grandmaster from the Netherlands, previously from Hungary. She also runs the best Z, which means the best move, which is a online chess book shop. Both links are in the description box and please Click on it to see what they have to offer. Thank you for all your entries. I got about 50 entries on who is your favorite world champion. And I asked you to do that. Tell me about that in one sentence. I'll show you a number of honorable mentions first. First one is from Castiel. My favorite world champion is Paul Morphy because he was extremely dominant. His play was very sharp and entertaining. And he was an incredible calculator and very accurate, as Bobby Fischer pointed out, at a time where very few rules existed in the chess world. We have to be a little bit romantic. He showed us how chess should be played after all. Beautiful words about Paul Morphy, but not in one sentence. But thank you very much, Castiel. Another honorable, honorable mention is from Carlos Morathan. And he says Garry Kasparov is his favorite world champion. This might be a strange comparison, but to me, he's like the last knight in the age of gunpowder. In my opinion, his loss to Deep Blue marked the beginning of a new era in chess, where now advanced engines are used to leverage some of the brightest minds in existence. Beautiful words from Carlos Morathan about Garry Kasparov. And there are a few more. Ravenlord says, being brilliant, handsome and charming, Capablanca is the quintessential example of both a champion and a gentleman, and was a wonderful ambassador for the game of chess to the world. Thank you, Ravenlord. And Mike Ojo says, my favorite chess player is Magnus Carlsen, because of his dynamic style of play, his flexibility, evaluating correctly in any position, and has the combined attributes, playing style of Karpov. And Fischer. Very nice, Mike. And the last page of honorable mentions. Abi Avioneni says, Misha Tal, Mikhail Tal, because in his mind, 2 plus 2 will always be 5. Pelligini 50 says, Emmanuel Lasker is my favorite player, because he was much better than Steinitz, and even Albert Einstein called him a genius. Yes, and that says something. And Jill, Jill Rowley, always putting in nice comments to every video I make. And she says something beautiful about the great Bobby Fischer. Bobby Fischer, because he made chess look so simple. And if you ever have studied a game of Bobby Fischer, you have to agree with that statement. But now the winner. Who's the winner of this competition? It is David James with his quote also on Bobby Fischer. He says, Robert Fischer exported chess from the USSR to the world and into the mind of a 10-year-old South African. Congratulations, David. You've won a chess book. You've won Gradmaster versus Amateur. And if you send me a message to e by email to classroomchess at gmail.com, then with your address, then I will put it in a mail to you. Congratulations, David, and thank you for these beautiful words about the 11th world champion. The second competition will be in video number 227. We were gonna, I'm going to run this competition for six weeks till November 11th. 
and the second question will be in that video. Hope you will enter the competition and also hope you will click on the link of the sponsor, the Mind Game Shop, to see what they have on offer. At the start of the video I showed you this position from Wolfgang Pauli and it's a mate in four. And I will give the solution now, so if you want to look for yourself, put the video on pause. How can white mate black in four moves? Well, what is quite tempting is to play queen e5, because then we have a mate threat on h8 and on b8, and it's not clear what black can do against that. In fact, it's checkmate on the next move. But no, it's not because black, even though we are far in the end game, can still castle. And after castling, there is no mate in three from here. Yes, you can take the bishop, but you cannot checkmate the black king in the prescribed number of moves. So queen e5, even though, even though it looks very strong, does not work because of castling. So what can white do? Well. I'll give you the solution. On the first move, white plays queen b5 check. And what good is that? Well, let's first look at what happens if you play, for example, well, not for example, black only has two moves. So if you play king d8, then queen b8 is checkmate. And that's checkmate in two moves. So the only other option after queen b5 check is to play king f8. And how do we now checkmate the black king from here in three moves? Well, the only solution is now to go back to f5 with check. We already spent two moves and we have the queen back on, this init on its initial square. So how good could that be? Well, if now the king goes to g7, then there is queen f7 checkmate. King g8 also queen f7 checkmate, so black has no option but to go back with his king, king to e8, and we have the exact same position as at the start, we have played two moves each, but now black no longer has castling rights, so we play queen e5 again, and we threaten checkmate on h8 and on b8 like we did in the beginning, but now black cannot castle. And whatever he does, he gets checkmated. If he saves his rook, rook g8, then there is queen b8 checkmate. If he plays king f8, then there is queen takes h8 checkmate. And finally, if he plays king d8, then there is also queen b8 checkmate. Wonderful construction. Let's look at the main line again. Queen b5 check, king f8, queen f5 check, king e8, and we have the exact same position that we started with, but with no longer black having any castling rights. And then queen e5, and whatever black does, for example, rook g8, he gets checkmated on the fourth move. Beautiful, hope you like it. Hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel. Please leave a comment. And if you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media. You also may want to check out my Chess to Progress channel. The link is in the description box. And don't forget to click on the link of the sponsor of this competition. I'll see you in video number 227 for the second competition, the competition of the second week. This is Rick from Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.